Aristotle's concept of infinity was not, as we might think, some all-encompassing notion that contains everything. It was the opposite. He believed infinity was innate in every piece of matter in the universe. Therefore infinity is part of the ultimate nature of matter, whatever shape or form that it might take in a particular object. He believed in a potential infinity that could continuously be divided up into smaller and smaller parts, just like we have in mathematics. For Aristotle's concept of infinity to be part of the nature of reality, there would have to be a continuum of creation, with creation continuously coming into existence, bubbling up at the extremely small scale of the quantum level of the atoms. But in modern physics we have the Planck length and the Planck time that sets a limit to how small we can divide space and time. Therefore people say Aristotle was wrong and matter cannot be continuously divided up into infinitely smaller parts. This video will explain a process with the Planck constant being a constant of action within the process that forms space and time. Therefore the Planck constant is always there representing part of the geometry that forms the infinity of space and the eternity of time. This can be seen in the infinities of mathematics having geometry in the form of forward circles. This geometry represents the physical shape of a dynamic process and the geometry is also why we have pi in the equations of quantum mechanics. Because mathematics is a static system that is based on a dynamic process, we have the infinities of mathematics, like the irrational number pi, that continuous forever, always forming something new, with all the characteristics of a random number, but with a digit that can already be known. Therefore the irrational numbers that can only be written as an infinite series represent the continuum of time itself that has a dynamic geometry of space-time. In this theory, time and space are emergent properties formed by a physical process of continuous energy exchange with the future continuously coming into existence light photon by light photon. When light waves interact with matter it forms photon-electron couplings and the electron is the most spherical object in the universe. This theory predicts that this spherical symmetry or organization forms a low entropy that creates the possibility for the continuous increase in entropy or disorganization that we have in the second law of thermodynamics as time unfolds photon by photon. Therefore we have an arrow of time for each reference frame or object. Even an individual rose will have its own arrow of time with a timeline from the past into the future. In this theory, Aristotle's idea of a potential infinity was correct. The universe is a continuum continuously coming into existence at the smallest energy level with each new light photon oscillation or vibration. Therefore, quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process, the spontaneous absorption and emission of light represented by the quantum wave particle function or probability function forms the uncertainty known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This represents the same uncertainty we have with any future event. The wave particle duality of light is continuously forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual. This is what we are seeing when we see an artist at work. We are seeing new light photon oscillations or vibrations coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of the artist. In this theory, the individual is an interactive part of creation, and because the photon is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force, the electrical potential is linked to our future potential, with the electrical activity in the brain representing the most advanced part of this universal process. Therefore, conscious thought is always in the moment of now, with a continuous stream of thoughts and ideas that can comprehend 
this process as time, as an interactive process of continuous creation with a potential future infinity of possibilities. This theory can explain the paradoxes of infinity because we have a process of continuous creation that we see and feel as time but has the geometry of space-time. A mathematician will interact with this universal process continuously forming his or her own space-time geometry therefore it is only logical that he will be able to divide that geometry into infinitely smaller parts as time unfolds. The universe is dynamic and expanding and this forms the infinities of human mathematics. In this diagram we have infinity between the whole numbers 1 and 2. The finite part of this series can be made as close as you like to the whole number 2 but will never actually reach it. This infinity between each whole number must represent something fundamental in the structure of our universe. Aristotle's idea of something being potentially infinite went some way to explaining this but only a deeper understanding of time as a continuous process forming the geometry of space-time with a potential infinity of future events can give us a total explanation. The mathematician George Cantor found a structure to infinity. He found that you could build up a never-ending tower of larger and larger infinities from below, but he realized that infinity could not be approached from above. The more we depart from zero and approach greater and greater numbers, the more we depart from infinity. This makes logical sense in this theory. The zero represents zero time, or t equals zero, the moment of now, formed by light interacting with matter. The zero represents an infinite branching point, with the positive numbers marching off, forming a potential future, with a square of probability. The negative numbers, receding towards a limitless past, representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. This whole process can be seen as a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. There is an infinite number of line symmetries within a sphere and also an infinite number of rotational symmetries. This is where the infinities come from that we find in mathematics and this process also forms the potential infinity of possibilities and opportunities of everyday life. It would be logical if time was formed by this process that represents a spontaneous absorption and emission of light that time would expand out in every direction in three-dimensional space with the expansion of the universe. But this is not what we observe. Time is two-dimensional with a past and future and a timeline forming an arrow of time that modern physics cannot explain. This line symmetry is formed because when the light comes in contact with matter it forms a photon-electron coupling forming a magnetic moment or dipole moment. This forms matter-antimatter annihilation in just one direction forming the arrow of time within that reference frame. When the spherical symmetry is broken it forms spiral symmetry forming the imperfect spiral symmetry that is visible in nature as the Fibonacci spiral. Because the process is universal, intelligent life will form its own broken symmetry out of this process, forming its own future relative to its energy and momentum of its own actions. In this theory, creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder. Please subscribe and rate it will help in the promotion of this theory that changes our view of the universe and our place within it.